It's the second coming of the new Beetle. Is it worthy of all the hype? Let's find out. Well, in terms of its looks, I say it hits the mark. It's less cartoon-like and less rounded than the first new Beetle. But thankfully, there's no mistaking it. It's definitely a Beetle. From every angle, it's a looker. And most importantly, it's fun. So comparing the Beetle here to this classic, a 1970 notchback. In fact, this one was never even offered in the United States, but you can still clearly see a family resemblance. And that's what's cool. This one, clearly a Volkswagen, and this one, clearly a Volkswagen. Since it's an all new design, the interior engineers had a chance to think about it. It's well thought out and aesthetically pleasing. To my eye, it looks pretty hip and fresh. The gauges are straightforward and easy to read. The steering wheel shares the same shape as the BMWs. You get power windows, power door locks and mirrors. There's your cruise control, Bluetooth controls right on the steering wheel, menu controls there. Over here you have the infotainment system, straightforward, easy to use, satellite radio, that's nice. You have heated seats and there's your ventilation controls as well. And the shifter, there's also a sport setting so you can shift it Tiptronic yourself if you like. The sound system sounds great and being a guitar player myself, I'm pretty impressed that it's made by Fender. In back you get a cup holder and a phone charger and two people should be comfortable, although your leg room might be a little cramped. The trunk is actually surprisingly roomy and you get fender base also. Of course, folding the seats down will add even more room. The inline 2.5 liter five cylinder produces 170 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. That's good for a zero to 60 time of 8.8 .8 seconds. Opt for the turbo and you'll be getting 200 horsepower and 207 pound feet of torque with a zero to 60 time of 6.3 seconds. You can expect to get 22 miles per gallon in the city and 31 miles per gallon on the highway. So in terms of pricing, the new Beetle is definitely a deal. Starts at $18,995. Of course, options will send that a little higher, navigation, leather seating, nice moon roof, things like that. So customize it as you will, but hey, 19 grand to start, that's pretty good. The turbo model will start at 23,395. So if you want a little bit more boost power, that's the one you want to go for. Like many people, I've had experience with Beetles my whole life. I remember a semi-automatic Beetle that my friend had we take to lunch and uh, it was so slow, but cool nonetheless. And this one really captures that original Beetle spirit. You know, the new Beetle, the last generation was uh, rounder and it was kind of a new interpretation of the original Beetle. This one really gets back to I think the spirit of the original. It's got a flatter roof line, there's less wasted space in the interior. Uh, to me it's just uh, much more appealing and having driven the old new Beetle, uh, there were some quirks with it, uh, blind spots and things like that. And just to me, again, just an overall waste of space that uh, this one has uh, designed out basically and uh, it seems to get smiles everywhere. I had a lady in a old new Beetle waving frantically at me. She definitely liked this one, so its appeal is definitely still there. It's the people's car. Spirited driving is actually surprisingly fun in the new Beetle. You know, I've tested the GTI and that is probably one of the best front drive cars I've ever driven. VW does a great job in making the GTI amazing to drive. And, you know, some of that has worn off into the new Beetle here. The roads here are a little bit slick. You know, it's fresh rain, but this Beetle hangs on tight. No drama, just predictable handling, and 
like I said, it's surprisingly fun to drive. So that right there is what having a moonroof is all about. And the gauges in the Beetle here, they're glowing blue and they're glowing red, but they're easy to read and well placed. When they launched the new Jetta, I was in San Francisco and you can check out my review of that one, but this one feels similar, the controls and that sort of thing. Of course, they have to keep the price down, but nothing feels really cheap. It's a little kind of German quirky, if you will, uh, not what you're used to in terms of placement if you're used to Japanese cars, maybe even American cars, but it works once you get the hang of it, and it's done much better than those controls in, say, the BMW, which I've tested recently, the M3 in particular. Um, so. They've done a good job here of, you know, an all new dash design and making it much more intuitive and easy to use and mainstream. So this Beetle, the new new Beetle, to me will appeal to a much larger group of buyers, in particular men. I mean, the last one had a flower pot on the dash for God's sakes. And, you know, I knew tons of women that had one. And to me, this new, new Beetle is just a better shape, it's a better use of space, and it's more like its spiritual successor, the original Beetle. I'm driving Ivan Katz.